Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you coming in from all over the United States and around the world. Today, we're going to have lots of fun because we're going to be playing with some good old wax paper and some embossing folders. Now, I've done similar techniques before in the past way long time ago, close to 15 years ago, I did a video using wax paper and embossing folders. And then I've done wax paper using stencils and just wax paper by itself. But with these brand new embossing folders, I thought it would be really fun to try the technique with them. And I'll tell you what, I experimented a little bit yesterday and they're absolutely beautiful. So if you've never seen this done before, I think you're really going to enjoy it. What you're going to need is you're going to need some wax paper. Now this is cut right wax paper. I don't even know if they still make this brand. I have to see where I got it here. Oh, Ben Franklin crafts. Wow. <laughs> That's a long time ago, huh? But um, you can get wax paper at your grocery store. The thing you want to make sure that you don't get is parchment paper. And a lot of people will get parchment paper and say, oh, the wax paper isn't working for me. Well, it won't work unless you have wax paper because the wax is what's important with this technique. So make sure you get some good old fashioned dollar store, you know, something like that wax paper. This is not something you ever want to put in your oven. So it's kind of the opposite kind of thing. And then you're going to need an iron. So I just have this old Black & Decker iron that I used to use. I bought a good iron for my clothes. And I keep this one just for crafting and doing fun things in the craft room. So um, can you use your good iron? Yes, you can. The one trick though, if you're gonna use a good iron for this technique, I highly recommend you just put a thin piece of copy paper or cardstock over where you're gonna iron first to make sure you don't get wax on your iron. You also don't wanna have any water in your iron at all. So if you normally iron with steam, get rid of the water, let it dry out because you don't want any steam on this project, just a hot iron. Um, parchment paper will not work parchment paper will not work. So if you're thinking, oh, I have parchment, I'll try that. It's going to be very disappointing. Parchment paper does not have wax on it and you need the wax because the wax is what's going to transfer, not anything to do with the paper itself. The paper is just the carrier method for the wax. So make sure you have wax paper. Okay. Now, before we go any further, let's say hello to our good friend, Tom. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> you sound <laughs> like you have a cold. I do. I have throat issues, but I have, I'm all fired up. I have a lozenge. <laughs> a lozenge? A lozenge, which I believe is a word of French origin that means lodged in the throat. <laughs> That's the word of the day right there. Lodged in your throat. A lozenge. <laughs> Oh, that's a shame. Well, I know I know Tom hasn't been feeling well for a couple of days, but he did get a COVID test and it's negative. He got a strep yeah. test. It's negative. So it's just whatever other crud is going around. It does um, have its have its benefits, though. I'm working on my Barry White set. <laughs> Barry White music. Yeah, we up, get to hear some of that baby. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I'm glad that you... Uh, climbed out of your <laughs> dead space to come and say hello. <laughs> yeah, here I go. <laughs> All right. So um, I see a couple questions. People are asking, can I use a Cricut press? Probably, because it's like an iron, but I don't have a Cricut press, so I don't know 100%. But I always say, just try it. I can tell you what won't work, but I don't have everything, so I can't tell you all the things that will work. I can tell you parchment paper will not work, but the Cricut press sounds like it probably will work. So anything that's kind of heavy and has an iron kind of thing. Now, um, I I tried to do this with my, the laminator, and it it didn't work. So I, I wouldn't do it with the laminator um, because as I started to feed the embossing folder through, I thought, oh my gosh, I can't make, you know, I mean, as I started to feed the paper through, I was thinking it's probably not going to put enough heat in one place concentrated long enough. I did not try to put the embossing folder through, that would melt. So I'll show you my technique. And then if you guys, you know, want to ask some questions as you go, Go ahead and ask, and I will do my best to answer, and Tom will help 
me by yelling out questions if I don't see them. All right, so let's go back to this again for anybody that's just joining us because I know a lot of people just joined us. Here is the wax paper that I'm using. It's Cut Right Wax Paper by Reynolds. I got it years ago at Ben Franklin. It lasts forever because I don't use it in my kitchen. I only use it for crafting. I'm also going to use my good old Black & Decker iron. It is a steam iron, but I have no water in it. I am gonna turn it on and I'm gonna let it heat up and I have it all the way up to the hottest setting. So I'm gonna let that heat up for a little bit off to the side. Now, let me not burn myself. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit here. So what you're going to do to start is, can Tom yell? I don't think he can yell, not today. <laughs> you're going to take a piece of parchment paper that is not parchment. I said parchment, wax paper, wax paper. That's a little bit bigger than your embossing folder. You can see there's my embossing folder. It's a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to trim this down to kind of like the size of my cardstock that I'm going to use. So for my cardstock, I just cut a bunch of pieces here of white layering weight cardstock. <laughs> and um, you're going to use two pieces of cardstock at a time. So what you're going to get when you use two pieces of cardstock at a time is you're going to get two different styles of impression. Because remember, when we emboss with an embossing folder, one side is the detail side and the other side is the flat side and they're going to look different when you do this technique as well but it's kind of fun because you get it all at once you do it all at once all right so i'm going to cut this wax paper down just using my um paper cutter here first i'm just going to cut a straight edge and then i'm going to cut this down to about let me just get another straight edge i'm going to cut it down to four and a quarter, maybe just a little under four and a quarter because my cardstock is four and a quarter. So a little under four and a quarter by five and a little under five and a half. Okay. So there's two ways that you can do this. The first way is you can crinkle this piece of wax paper first to give more texture um, and that's kind of a cool look, but we're not going to do that for this first one anyway. What we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to get my die cutting machine. You turn the steam off of the iron? Yes, yeah, so you don't want any steam at all. I actually poured all the water out of this iron and I don't use it at all. Okay, so I'm going to get my die cutting machine here. And I'm going to get the setup that I use for embossing, which is the a platform the big platform and then i like the embossing plate but if it's too hard for you guys uh you can use just the regular clear plate and a couple pieces of cardstock on top just to shim it up and make it tighter i'm gonna go for it i'm gonna go for all muscle here so you want to take those two pieces of cardstock and you want to actually we're gonna do this later we're gonna take our embossing folder. I'm gonna use the Petite Flourish embossing folder for my first one. And I'm gonna put this piece of wax paper right into the embossing folder. And then I'm gonna close it. And I'm gonna put that down on my platform and stick my blue plate on top and I'm going to run this through. Oh, everybody's wishing you, Gee. sorry. It shot out again and it hit my little tray of, things <laughs> all the things okay so now i've embossed this and i'll show you what this is this looks like all right you can see it's pretty cool actually you've got to kind of peel it off here there we go it will not affect your embossing folder at all so don't worry about that okay so you can see what that looks like all right so now our next step is going to be I have a couple little pieces of cardstock here just bunched up together. These were some miscuts from work and I just grabbed them out of a pile. But here's the thing. You can do this on an ironing board if you want. You just have to make sure that 
when you do this, that you're not doing it directly on your table. Because remember, this iron is really hot and you don't want to ruin your surface of your table. So I have just a little chunk of cardstock here. Again, this is not cardstock I plan on using. So it's going to curl the cardstock, but that's okay. You can use it over and over again if you want. You can even tape the sides up and make this your, your work. Uh, cardstock mat. And then I'm going to take one piece of cardstock and I'm going to place my parchment, um, my wax paper. Oh my gosh, Tom, every time I say parchment, we should make a drinking game. If it, <laughs> everybody get your fruit salad out. And every time I say parchment by accident, take a drink. <laughs> so I have the wax paper here and then I'm putting another piece of cardstock on top. Okay. Now, if you're using a good iron, I would recommend putting maybe a piece of layering weight white cardstock on top of the whole thing or a piece of copy paper, something just to protect your iron in case any of the wax, see a little bit of wax paper is sneaking out there. In case any of it sneaks out, you don't want to get wax on your good iron. So just a piece of copy paper is fine. You just want to protect it. Now, this is my craft iron. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to iron this. And I'm just working my way over, being careful not to shift the cardstock. I want the cardstock to stay in one place because I don't want the image to transfer, you know, several times. It'll look just like a blurred stamp image. It's going to look blurred and crackly enough, which we want, but we don't kind of want to keep it, kind of want to keep it all together. Okay. So there we go. Now, if you want to, you can pick the whole thing up and you can flip it around and you can iron it from the other side. If you feel like you didn't get enough heat on there because maybe you have some kind of cardstock protecting your iron, but that's fine. That's all you have to do. Okay. So now I'm just going to take this out. This can actually be used to ink up and spray water on it and then tap your paper on it and you'll get a really pretty image off of that. And if we have time, I will show you that. But it because it's wax paper, it's kind of like water resistant, you know? And so, or waterproof, you know, the water's not gonna seep through it. So you can kind of use it almost like acetate. And it's such a pretty design, you might as well keep it. Okay, so now I've got two pieces here. Now, I've had some people say, oh my gosh, I tried to ink it up and nothing happened, and they actually had it upside down. You can't see the wax on here. It's on there, but you can't see it. So if you start inking and nothing is happening, just try flipping it upside down because that might be the problem. All right, so I thought I would do this color palette today for this. This is powder blue, wild wisteria, and wild lilac. And um, I've been doing so much with pink that I thought my purples and blues have been getting a little ignored. And I do a lot of turquoise too. So I have a brush right here. I'm just gonna clean that brush to see if there's anything on there that I don't want on there. Might have a little bit of gray. So let me get a paper towel so I can really see what's on there. All right, I think that's pretty good. That's pretty clean. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up my brush with some Wild Wisteria ink. And I'm going to start ink blending over this. Now, I don't know which side I have here, so I'm going to do both sides so you can see the difference. But you start to see. You see that beautiful pattern coming up? It's very much a batik look. And I'm just doing some swirls because I'm going to add some blue into this. So you can see I'm not doing the entire thing in Wild Wisteria. But look how pretty that design is coming out. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I don't know how well they can see that, but they should be able to see that design pretty well. Yes. Sue wants to know if you, can, you think this would work with vellum. Uh, nope, it won't work with vellum. Vellum doesn't have wax on it either. You have to use wax paper. Okay, so I'm going to, I mean, I don't know what other kind of paper has wax on it, but I know vellum doesn't, parchment doesn't. Um, great question, though, because they all kind of feel that way, don't they? All right, I'm going to get my other ink stand here, and I'm going to add a little powder blue to this and see how that looks. I want that to be 
kind of light. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, isn't that pretty? I really love the pattern that this created. And it's very different. I mean, like if you just looked at that, it does not look like our petite flourish stamp. It does not look like our petite flourish uh, foil mate. It's got its own kind of look because it's got all the crackles in there from the wax paper. That's what's so cool about it. Okay, I'm going to add just a little bit of this um, wild lilac in there just to have a more pinky purple. So, clarification, they are asking, can you just transfer the wax paper to the vellum? <clears throat> oh, oh. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you actually want to iron on the vellum and then ink up the vellum? Yeah. You could probably do that. Um, you know, it's hard to ink on vellum with dye ink. It, it takes forever to dry, but you could definitely try it. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't like use the vellum in place of the wax paper. All right. So that's the first side. So let's see what the other side looks like. Let's use some different colors for the other side. I'm gonna use some Lucky Clover. Put some Lucky Clover on here. Now this is much milder design. Can you see that coming out? But it's not as intricate as this. So obviously, the other side looks very different. It's pretty, though. And sometimes around the edges, I don't get as much heat. And that's a me problem. So, you know, you might want to concentrate a little bit more on getting heat onto the edges of your cardstock, too. Now, my... my uh, wax paper was cut smaller than my piece of cardstock, which was intentional because I want to I want to cut it out really with a master layouts die. So I did that on purpose, and I also didn't want it to bleed out underneath and um, get all over my iron, even though I wasn't using another um, piece of cardstock on top, which I could have, but I still wanted to protect my iron a little bit. Okay, I'm using a little turquoise C on here now. This is a great combination, this color combo. And it does give, this is a really pretty pattern on this side too, but you can see it's different. Like here you get all the thin lines from the embossing folder and here all those thin lines are open. Just like when you emboss where one side looks one way and the other side looks another way. It's pretty though. You really don't have to wipe this off, but if you want to, you know, you might, it might pick up a little bit of ink on your paper towel, like, because, and it might brighten up the wax a little bit because the wax is resisting the ink, which is why it kind of looks the way it does. So you could do that. You could see a little bit came off there. And it does brighten it up just a bit. Yeah, both color combinations are fun, aren't they? I like going over some of that green with a little more turquoise to kind of green, blue green it up. Bluey it, bluey it up. <laughs> bluey, it's more bluey. That's one of our words. <laughs> oh, still working on your lozenge over there, Tom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So there, that's how that particular uh, embossing folder looks. Now let's try another embossing folder, same technique, but totally different look. And then also, if you don't have embossing folders, you can just crinkle a piece of wax paper. Let me find a little piece here. This is just a tiny piece. You could just crinkle it all up in a ball like this. And then 
See all the, the lines that are in it? If you just use wax paper like this, it's going to look a lot like an animal print. So that might be a really fun background if you've got little animal stamps like the zoo kind of thing, a little birthday card for a kid or something like that, and you want more of an animal print. And if you did it all in rainbow, it would work, you know, it would be beautiful too. It'll just be a pattern. Um, the heat setting on my iron is all the way up. It's the hottest that you can make it. And I'll do it again and we can kind of time it because I didn't really time it. I just hold it on there for a little bit. It doesn't take long for the, um, the wax to transfer. But those are the first two. And I think this one is the one I'm gonna use for my card. I'm gonna make a finished card because I'm really interested in uh, this color combination today. Okay, so I have an, another piece of wax paper here. And oh my gosh, my hair is coming out. I have to get my hair done. It's been way too long. I tried to get in with my daughter to get my hair cut and she's booked solid. <laughs> no time for mommy. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut this one down again a little bit more than four and a quarter on this side just to get rid of that. I wanted two sharp edges. Okay, so five and a quarter, a little under five and a half. And then a little under four and a quarter. So it's just like a quarter sheet of cardstock, but I'm doing a quarter sheet of wax paper. I had to Google today, Tom, before I promoted this on uh, Facebook. I had to Google whether it was wax paper or waxed paper. Oh. And um, apparently it can be both. So then I ran into my craft room here and I saw that this said wax paper. So I did it that way. But it seems like waxed would be more correct. Okay. So we all know that this... Um, Tapestry one is going to be gorgeous. So if you have this one, definitely try it with this. But I want to try it with more of a plain look. So I'm going to try it with the lattice. And I think this is going to give us a really pretty look too. Okay. Should we crinkle it first? Let's crinkle it first. Okay. All right. I'm going to crinkle it first. <laughs> right, Shelly. That's exactly right. When you're uh, when you repair heaters, your heater is the last to get fixed. When you repair cars for a living, your car is the last to get fixed. That's the way it is, right? Okay. All right. In my case, I didn't have any black cardstock for the longest time. I was like nursing the last two sheets. I finally got myself a pack this morning. All right. So now we have that in there like that. Let's get the die cutting machine. Oh, Tom, this one's going to really scream. Get ready. All right. <laughs> ride the mic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're going to have to lower the mic so that it doesn't ruin anybody's speakers at home because this one is a tight embossing folder. I think it's because of the big squares. I don't know. But here we go. Okay, get ready. There we go. <laughs> Diane, you bought your wax paper at Ben Franklin too? I must have said that in one of my other videos too because people were asking me where did I get it. But I think my grocery store has it too. All right, so I'm gently taking this out, trying not to rip it. But that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? All right. We'll do a little water spritz on, on it too just to show you how it looks. So I've got um, two more pieces of cardstock here. And then once again, I'm going to put the one piece of wax paper here and the other piece here. Now, I'm not so worried about it being perfectly straight. I just want it to be inside because, again, I'm going to cut this with a die later. And, you know, I can make sure it's straight when I cut it. Okay, so I've got it back on my little chunk of cardstock here. Oh, good. The Dollar Tree has it. That's good. Meyer, Meyer has wax paper. Oh, good. Okay, so here I go. If anybody wants to time it, kind of see how long I hold it. But I just really work my way across, just making sure that it everything... And you can almost tell because things stop shifting around. Make sure, yeah. 
So I'm just really getting the heat on there, making sure the wax paper melts or the wax melts. And then if you want to, just be careful, flip it over, it's hot, ouch. And then just do the other side. But you don't have to do the other side. It's just your bottom piece might not be as vibrant as your top piece if you don't do the other side, but it's not necessary. And then again, you don't have to wait any amount of time to take it off. It won't affect it. And then again, you can use this as a fun little water spritz piece. Now, I'm going to put these aside for a second, and we're just going to do that little water spritz thing. So we'll just take this side. Should we take this side? Yeah. So I'm going to take a little bit of Wild Wisteria ink, and I'm going to just kind of rub it on here. Try not to rip the wax paper. This is a very different look. Should have used ink cubes for this. I'm kind of rubbing it, but not super hard because I don't want to tear it. And I'm getting very inky in the process. And then let me see if I have. Oh, that's that's a, gonna be a bright one. This is Blue Lagoon. I'm gonna throw a little of that on here too. Just rub a little of that in there. Okay, this is the wax paper. We get a paper towel, because I will ruin 5,000 projects now that my fingers are <laughs> full of ink. <laughs> okay, and now, oh, let me reach you here. I'm gonna get my little Dispress spray bottle. And with this bottle, if you do a full pull on the trigger, you get a fine mist. If you do a half pull, you get a lot of droplets. So I'm going to do a couple full pulls on it. Like that. And then I'm going to put a piece of cardstock right on top of that. And I'm going to rub my hands all over it. This is kind of similar to that five minute card pro Oh Well, actually I did a full video on this too. The water uh, spritz with the stencils kind of gives you a similar look, but isn't that pretty? I love that. And that's just from what's left. So you don't waste your, um, your wax paper. Now we'll give that a minute to dry. And once that dries, then I'll show you what I would do on top of that. Okay, so we'll let that dry for a minute. We'll get back to inking up our little lattice embossing folder. So that's the one that we did with this embossing folder. And let's see, what colors should I try for this? How about if I do some yellows and oranges? We'll do some bright colors. Let's do a little orange here. Where did I put my ink stands? They were here a second ago. How is that possible? I have barely anything on my desk. Here it is. Okay, so we'll use a little bit of orange. Let's start with this one. I don't know which one is which. Um, you can't, you know, uh, I don't know who said that. It just whipped by really fast, but I saw the question. Oh, Diane, could I use the wax paper more than once? You know, you could try. Um, but one thing that I, I noticed is that once most of the wax comes off, there's not much left on there to transfer. And so you get a little bit of a design, but not much. But I mean, you know, if you have a, a scrap of cardstock, you could try it. And even a scrap could be used as a small pattern paper piece on a card. So let's get a little orange in there. Sorry, a little yellow. <laughs> so you can see what this is starting to look like. How about... Let's try a little green. I'll just use what's on this blending brush here. It's kind of a rainbow thing going. Well, we might as well just go down the rainbow is turquoise sea left over and of course if you added more turquoise sea to this 
it's going to make your, your work more vibrant. Same with the green. I'm going to add a little bit of this purple in here. But you can see, you get that nice texture back there. So this one I really like. I'm not sure about the orange so much, but I really like the softness of this. So I have something else I want to try, and I'll try it with this other piece. I think this particular embossing folder would look great as a super soft background using just a light gray. So it would give you some texture. Do I have ink pad holders for dewdrops? You know, it's not, I don't make these. This, these are from a place called the Ink Stand Shop. Um, and I don't know what they have. They may have some for dewdrops. I'm not 100% sure, but it's the Ink Stand Shop. So if you Google that, you'll be able to find them. And they've got them for a lot of different shaped pads. So they might have those, I'm not sure. So I'm gonna use some gray. And I feel like this would be just very, very elegant for a background. Oh yeah, isn't that pretty? It's almost like crackly tile and it's so distressed. I love how distressed that is. My pleasure, Cheryl. And then you know that technique where we just highlighted a little bit of the inside? You could start in the center and work your way out. And that would be a great grounding pattern to put some flowers on. Yep, you could drag the ink pad over this if you wanted. It'll get nice and dark. Definitely can do that. You could drag it and get a little bit of wood grain, but you really need to kind of get the ink down into and around the wax to really get the pattern to show. So you can see what that looks like. So that's kind of fun, huh? Now I'll show you one that I did earlier. This was just a little test piece that I tried. And then I thought it looked really pretty just to make it multicolor. And something like that would be a great little panel then to put flowers around or to put butterflies and dragonflies and stuff like that. So you can see all these cool looks that you can get with it. All right, let's go back to this one now because it's pretty dry. This is the one that I did with the, wa with the water spritz. And I'm going to just add a little color on top of that. So maybe a little light green, or maybe just a little pink. Maybe we should try a little pink in there. Let's do a little pink. Um, I'll do bubble gum, because I want it to be real light pink. I need a light pink brush. Do I have one? I don't know. What was I doing here? Look at that. What did I, faint or something in the middle of? <laughs> it's got like four colors on it. Well, let's see. None of them are transferring. So I'm going to use this for a little bubble gum. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little pink in here. See, and it just finishes it off a little bit when you add some light color. Oh, the, the cardstock doesn't feel waxy at all. It barely feels like there's anything on here. like that too. Isn't that pretty? Oh yeah, and the pink and gray would look great together. Yeah, I have a lot of brushes, Allison. I, I like your idea. I have light brushes and dark brushes. I think two sets of brushes is not too many to have, but that's, you know, I don't like to push that because I don't want anybody to feel like they have to buy more brushes, but it is nice to have you know, brushes for your light pinks versus your dark pinks and your light turquoises versus the dark ones. But you certainly can just rub the color off like I normally do with a piece of um, paper towel. You can get a lot of that color off and it'll get lighter and lighter. And then once it's a lot lighter, 
you know, then maybe this brush could be used on peach bellini, if that makes sense. Okay. All right. So here are some of the different ones that we played with. Um, we did a lot here. Kind of like the rainbow effect on that one. I feel like that would be kind of cool if you cut it on an angle like that. But, but the one that I'm going to work with today to make my card is this right here. Because this is the color combination that I was really in the mood for. I did just a plain one yesterday. And you can see how it looks in just not quite as vibrant, a little softer. But these colors, I've been into these colors the last couple of days. Do you guys get like that too? All of a sudden, all your cards are turquoise or all your cards are pink for a while. <laughs> and then you kind of get sick of it and you're like, all right, I'm ready for a new color combo. Well, that was me. I must have made about a thousand pink cards using all of our beautiful ephemera. And now that I have all those cards made and posted, I feel like it's time for a new color. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this panel out using Master Layouts 2. So I need to get my plates here. And I have some more plates on order because mine are just getting there again. I do a lot of die cutting. You don't need to get new plates, but there's something about them that's nice. All right, and I'm just going to cut it anywhere. There's no right or wrong way to cut this one. Okay. Boy, I hope that's not... My microphone is like right by the other side of this die cutting machine. So there we go. I have that panel cut out. I just love those colors. Oh, good. I'm not alone. So you guys do that too. You get stuck on a color. And that would be kind of a cool frame. You could trim that down to make it a little more even. And that might be really nice for a scrapbook. You know, putting a family picture in there or something. So I'm starting to get into scrapbooking, you guys. I am. It's like, you know how like we all have our hobbies, right? Card making is a big hobby for me. But I get to do it all the time. And I do it for my job, which is not really much of a job. <laughs> but you know what I, I'm saying, that I do a lot of it. So sometimes on the weekends, when I want to work on a hobby, I've started to get into scrapbooking a little bit. And I'm really trying to finish up a couple books for my kids. There's the black one. That's all master layouts too. I use the double, uh, the stitched one and the plain one from master layouts too. Now I'm going to do a little greeting and I, I picked a stamp set to use today. I picked Hannah's new set, Hannah Drapinski. This is her new spring bouquets. Let me see if I can get a good side of something to show you this. Um, here we go. This set is so pretty. And I thought for this color, it'd be really nice to have these flowers. So I'm going to stamp these flowers and then I'm going to stamp one of the greetings from Arjita's set. So I think I'm going to either do my forever friend or best wishes to you. I mean, this could be any kind of card, right? And I thought I would use master layouts three two of the circle dies from Master Layouts 3. So I want to see if any of these fit. So let's see what we have here. Um, it's kind of big. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to use Best Wishes to You. And then I think I'm going to wrap this flower kind of around the greeting. And I could actually do this card this way. I haven't done a card in this orientation for a while. So I could kind of nudge the greeting up in that corner and then work those flowers around it somehow. How about enjoy your special day? That could be a great graduation card. Let's see where the flowers would fit though. Hmm. Well, love you is always appropriate. Could do that. 
don't do that and just have the flower kind of coming up out of the love you. I think I'm gonna do that. Okay, so let's make this card now. <laughs> so I'm going to get a piece of white cardstock and I'm gonna stamp the greeting. I haven't used this one yet, so I'm just gonna rub my fingers over it a couple times to remove any of the manufacturing goop that you get on stamps. They just can't wash it all off. And I want to make sure wherever I put it on my card that there is still room to cut it because I tend to like try to use up my, but that's not going to work, you know? So I'm going to just keep it down here so I can cut that out. And then I'm going to also stamp this one at the same time. Alrighty. I don't know if Ben Franklin still has. Um, I yeah, I know. I think there are still stores. I just don't know if they still have wax paper or not. But you can get it at your grocery store. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Meyer. You just want to make sure it's a like a good waxy brand. Somebody said the Dollar Tree had it. Let's make sure I'm not infringing on my circle there. I am not. Okay. So I'm going to stamp these both at the same time. <laughs> Manufacturing goop. That is the technical term. You know what? I'm going to turn my iron off now because it's right by my arm and I keep washing up near the heat and I feel it. It's making me nervous. All right. I'm going to just stamp the love first. Oh, that looks good. I'll stamp it one more time for good measure. It's sticking to the bottom flower there. Okay. And now I'll stamp the flower. And we'll just do some quick Gamsaw coloring on this flower in some purples. Yeah, isn't that watercolor one, the water panel neat after, you know, after you use the wax paper, then you can get a little more use out of it. And that you could do over and over again. You know, you could add more color to it and spritz and spray as much as you want. Alrighty. So there we go. I'll clean those later. And we'll do a little bit of Gamsol coloring on this. Now, I need this close by because I have to pick colors that are going to work. So I grabbed a couple here. That looks pretty good. That is called Blue Violet Lake. And this one, oh, that's really pretty too. That one is called Parma Violet. I think the Parma Violet I'm going to use because I think this one is so light that, you know, blending it out with the Gamsaw it's already a very light color. I think you'll get more effect with this one. So I'll use this one. For the Chucky tool, I put a pretty decent amount of pressure when I use it. I don't know how to answer that really, but I, I put a, a good amount of pressure on it. It's not like that I'm in danger of breaking the misty or anything like that, but I do like to have a little bit of extra pressure. And then what is this color? Kelp green. I really want Kelly green. It's one of my favorite greens. You guys see me use it all the time. So let's see if I can find it in this jar here. Is this it? No. Hmm. Maybe I used it for something else. Did I take it home by chance or is it really small? <laughs> oh, here it is. Kelly green. I'm going to use that green. Okay, so I'm going to just sharpen this up a little bit. And then I'm going to do just some coloring right at the very base of each of these petals. This is a great flower to color for Gamsol. I love this set. Mindy Eggen just sent me a picture of something that she made with this. So Mindy... <laughs> You can't wait to see. So Alicia and I were um, 
my daughter Alicia and I, we were working on some layering stencils together. And she was showing me where she thought the light should come from. And here, and she had, she had it dark up here at the top. So I'm gonna try that. how it looks. I'm sure it'll look fine. The thing about Gamsol is it's kind of hard for it not to look good because again you know you're not really trying to um, show where light's coming from. I mean maybe some of you are and some of you can see that and I think that's great if you can. You really can't. But it just creates lights and darks in your flowers and it just gives that really pretty shaded look. So you can see I'm just coloring with a nice heavy hand, not the way you would normally color with colored pencils because with normal colored pencils, if you've ever taken a class, I took a class with Kathy Sanders, who is our manager here, and she's an amazing colored pencil artist. And I took a class with her and I had to unlearn a lot of stuff because I'm just such a Gamsol girl that I'm constantly like pushing real hard to get lots of color like this, like I'm doing now. And she was teaching us how to actually color with colored pencils for real, you know, where you just kind of build up color and stuff. Oh, my word. It was great. The class was great, but I had to relearn because I was so used to putting all this pressure on the pencil and not building color up and stuff. And she's just genius. So I'm not sure. I think these are leaves of the petals or petals. So we'll do that and let's blend that out. You're not good with Gamsol? Come on, sure you are. <laughs> it does take some practice, that's for sure. So let's see, I have a little bit left in here because my Gamsol is, I'm gonna need to get another bottle. I have sequins everywhere, you should see, because when, when, um, when the die cutting machine shot through, it made quite the, the mess. So here I have, um, this blending stump has some purple on it, but it looks like a lighter purple. So I'm just gonna file that color off so it, I can start fresh. And I'm just dipping my blending stump into the Gamsol. Oh, Debbie, welcome. I'm sorry you missed the first half, but it is gonna be on replay and it's worth a watch. It's kind of nice too, if you, know, if you watch live without trying to craft along and then you can go back and watch it later and you can pause. That's always kind of fun. This way you can kind of make the projects too. And of course you could do this with any embossing folder you have. You can also do it with stencils. And I do have a video out there where I used stencils for this. So, I think if you type in, you go to my channel on YouTube and then you just type in whatever keywords you want on my channel and videos will come up. So if you want to learn more about wax paper, type in wax paper and you'll see probably three or four videos that I've done on this subject. I'm getting to the point on YouTube where there's very little I haven't already made a video about. So it's kind of nice to try some new ways to use things, but if you like the technique, you definitely can um, see more ways to use it from some of my past videos. I guess that's my point. So we're blending this out. So Tom, Yes. That was your word of the day about your throat, <laughs> or do you have another one? <laughs> I might have another one. You might. <laughs> so, um, you, a lot of people know that I like cycling. Oh yes. I like to be out on my bike. We both do. Mm -hmm. But over the past many, many years of cycling, I've, I've crashed a few times, and. Um, this is just a funny word to describe a, a crash. Like a, if you're on your bicycle and you crash and your water bottle goes this way, your keys go this way, your sunglasses go that way, and everything's just laying all over the place. 
they they call that a yard sale. <laughs> is that really a thing among cyclists, or is that just a funny word of That's the day? It's definitely a thing among cyclists. Oh, that is so funny. It's called the yard sale. You crash and everything just flies all over. Everything the place. sails. <laughs> and it looks like it looks like the the front lawn with the blanket and the people selling stuff. <laughs> That is funny. <laughs> All right, so we've got our our <laughs> flowers here. Now we're going to quick do these leaves. <laughs> you will never find. Oh yeah, Barry White definitely. Oh, that's Lou Rawls, I think. Oh, Lou Rawls. Oh yeah, Lou Rawls. So I'm just coloring down at the bottom of these leaves. And even though we have more than one style leaf, I could use two different colors. I'm only going to use one today. But if you have a lot of time and you want to take your time coloring these, it would look pretty to do like these longer leaves in a maybe a more gray green and then the shorter leaves in the Kelly green. This is Kelly green that I'm using. One of my faves. Ooh, these leaves are so pretty, Argita. I mean, Hannah. Hannah designed this set. Argita designed the greeting. Both of those girls really draw some pretty flowers that you can color. Lisa, too, flowers. And Melanie. Oh my gosh, we've got so many. So many artists that do such beautiful work. Blow that away. Missed one. That one I missed, but I'm just going to catch it with the blending stump because it's so small. Okay, so this should go really fast. I'm going to use the other side of the blending stump that already has some green. <laughs> and then we'll just pull that color out. I used to love when we had our retail store and people would come in and they'd say, I can't do Gamsol. And then we'd just stamp something and I'd show them and then they'd take the blending stump and then theirs would look better than mine. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, I can do Gamsol. It's always so fun. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's squeaking a little, so, oh, I missed a leaf there. You guys probably saw that. Probably somebody told me, and I just didn't catch the comment. And we're going to cut this out, and then our card will be very quick to assemble. Almost done. So if you prefer, of course, you can color with Copic markers or watercolors. Zigs. A lot of people are using the Zig clean color brush markers these days. And the Karen markers. I don't know if it's Karen markers or Karen markers. I don't know how people say that, but all I know is that they are beautiful, but I don't think I am skilled enough to need them. I think I can stick with what I have here. <laughs> Be happy for a long time. Okay, so there's my flower, and I think it's a good, it pulls out a lot of this purple. So let's just do a little bit of quick die cutting here and we'll assemble this card. Okay, move all my water and everything out of the way. So I'm going to cut this out using the coordinating die, this flower. Let me find my plates. Now for this one, I just want to look at the die and make sure that if your blending stump isn't staying wet, I think it might be that um, either you're dipping too quickly, so hold it in there for a minute, or you need to file it a little bit with a nail file to get it a little more porous. Try those two things and see if you have a little bit more luck with that. I'm going to tape this down because I'm a little nervous.
after all that coloring, you know, you really don't want it to be messed up. There we go. Okay. And we'll cut this out. Wish me luck. <laughs> pretty good oops there we go looks pretty good it always looks so much prettier when, once it's cut out doesn't it <laughs> all right let me move this out of the way and now we're going to cut out this love you greeting and we're going to cut that out this is master layouts three it's one of the stitch dies and i'm thinking if i cut it like this i can kind of wrap the flower around here like that that makes sense. Okay, so we'll cut it like that. Ooh, this tape stuck to me and shifted everything. Okay, there we go. Cut it, cut it like that. And then we're gonna cut a black plain one that coordinates with it. Oh, it's so much fun to spend time with you guys. I love seeing you all here so much. Thank you for being here. And then this is the stitched one. I'm going to use this black piece of cardstock, a little leftover piece here. And then I'm going to cut this plain one. And I believe this is the plain one that coordinates with it. That should give me a nice little edge. <laughs> and we'll assemble this. So let's get rid of the die cutting machine. And we'll make it all pretty here so that it all comes together nicely. There we go. And let me grab some tape. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is tape these two layers together in my little circle. I'm so covered in purple. <laughs> okay, I've been covered in turquoise enough. It's time to give purple some love. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing over here to these two panels. So there's a couple ways we can do it. I want to try it this way just to see what this looks like. I think that would be very beautiful, right like that. So I was going to turn it on its side, but honestly, I think this is going to be the thing. And then I'm going to add a couple little sequins in here. So the blending stump is a size one. It's by Creative Mark, and it's a size one blending stump. And then this whole thing, it'll really pop when I get it on this white background. See, isn't that pretty? That'll be so pretty. Okay, so we'll throw that together. So your greetings don't always have to fit the die perfectly. You can, as long as it's, you know, fitting in there somewhere, then you can use that die piece to kind of ground your greeting and then it's a great way to place your floral design on top. So let's let's tack that one down. Get that right about there. Before I press it, I just want to make sure that it's in the right spot. And we'll do that. Okay, so I want this extending a little bit off. I think that really looks pretty. So I'm going to move that over just a little bit. Then I'll smash it down. Then I'm going to use a little foam tape and pop this up. And that background's pretty, isn't it? Doesn't it kind of look like batik? Batik fabric? A lot of ways to get that effect, but wax paper's fun. You never know what you're going to get. That's what's so, like, really fun about it. You just don't know what it's going to 
turn out looking like. There we go, that'll pop up like that. And then we can add a couple little sequins. <laughs> Sometimes it takes me a little longer to make a card when I want to do coloring on it. And I really felt like this card needed some coloring and it needed a nice floral in there. So we're just slipping that leaf like right into that area there. There we go. And then I'll put a couple little sequins in there. Let me find my connect glue. I haven't glued anything in a little while, so my little bottle has a little nub of dried glue right on the top that I just need to pick off. Okay, so we'll put a sequin there, put one there, one there. And then I could use dew drops. I'll use sequins They're right here. They're all over the place because I banged into the little cup that they were in and they just flew. <laughs> flew everywhere. <laughs> so we'll start down there. Oh, my jewel picker is a little gluey. Tiny ones up here. Let go. Oh, there were two stuck together. There we go. I really like to let the glue sit a little bit to get tacky before I put the sequins on, but because that happens, we use a bigger one. All right, Tom, while I'm fumbling with this, we are going to give this card away. I'm going to let the glue dry for a minute and take my own advice. All right, so while the glue is drying, we're going to give this card away to one lucky winner. Somebody was asking before how you get to win. And the best way is to leave a comment during the live. And anywhere during the live, if you leave a comment, um, we will uh, you will be automatically entered. Yes, we do have the clear dewdrops in our store. It's one of our embellishments. If they're not in stock right now, I did get a notification that a ton of embellishments are actually on their way. So it'll probably be back in stock. Um, in another week at the most. There we go. All right. So there's the finished card. That little bit of shimmer in there. All right. Okay. So, Tom. Drum roll. Who please. gets the card? All right. The winner of the Crafternoon afternoon session is Linda Diarman Walter. Linda. Linda, congratulations. So Linda, all you have to do is send your name and address to info at Gina K Designs and let them know that you won the wax paper card and I will get that out to you as soon as possible. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's card project. I hope you enjoyed the technique and I hope you'll give it a try. We will be back. I'll be back this weekend with another five minute card video. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.